Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater, and on today's Synth Clips, we're going to talk about complex modulation. So what do I mean by complex modulation? Well, to start, let's talk about modulation. In its simplest terms, that's if you take something that's wiggling and you wiggle it with something else. I mean, that's modulation. Uh, it could be an LFO wiggling an oscillator so that you've got vibrato. It could be an LFO wiggling filter so you got wah, 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 wah. It could be an LFO wiggling an amplifier for tremolo. Um, but it could be an envelope. It could be anything that wiggles, wiggling something else. That's modulation. Now, complex modulation, again, using the simplest terms, is when something's wiggling something that's wiggling something uh, or extended to that, right? So to demonstrate complex modulation, I'm using the ASM Hydra synth. One, because it's a great sounding synth and it does really great modulation, uh, but it's easy to do complex modulation on this because of its mod matrix. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign LFO1 to the pitch of all the oscillators. So I just hit assign, I hit LFO1, I go down one level, and now I want to go to pitch. I could do oscillator 1 or oscillator 2 or oscillator 3. If I scroll one more, it's all oscillators. I hit it one more, it's set to pitch. If I turn that up, we're going to hear LFO1 modulating uh, the oscillator. So now for my first complex modulation, I'm going to take LFO1 and modulate its depth going to pitch with a mod wheel. And you might not even think that's complex modulation because it's a very common thing to do, but it is. So we're going to assign mod wheel and we're going to send it to the mod matrix, and you just get there by touching mod matrix, and then which matrix of the 32 that are there, I want to modify number one. I currently have the LFO to pitch depth at zero. What this is going to do is crank that number up when the mod wheel goes up. So with it at zero, nothing. But as I turn this up more, I can set what the max depth will be. And for those who want to know the math, what I'm doing is, is I'm multiplying the amplitude of the LFO against this value. So when this is zero, it's multiplied by zero, there is no vibrato. When it's at 100%, it's multiplied by 100%. So you get all of the vibrato. All right, so now let's add one more level of complexity. And that is, while I push the mod wheel up, I not only want it to be deeper, but I want it to be faster. So I go to my next one. I set that again to mod wheel. Okay, and I make the destination LFO1's rate. So now, if I push it up with that at zero, the rate stays the same. But now if I increase that, you're going to hear the rate go up a little bit. And I might slow the LFO down just a little bit so I can go slower in the lower range there. But now, you'll hear that when this is all the way down, there's no vibrato. And as I push it up, there's going to be a slower vibrato. And the farther I push the mod wheel, it's not only going to get deeper, but it's going to get faster, which is a very musical thing to do. So now let's try another one. So now this time what I've got set up is LFO3 is modulating the filter cutoff and it's currently at zero, so the filter should be still. And as I turn it up, you're gonna hear the filter go up and down based on the shape of LFO3, which I will set to a triangle wave. So I'm back here, and you should hear this as I turn it up. But I'm gonna set it back to zero, and now I'm going to use another LFO, LFO4, and I'm going to use it to slowly change how deep 
the LFO3 is modulating the filter cutoff. How did I do that? I took LFO4, I assigned it to mod matrix depth one, which is this one, and I'm gonna turn that amount up. So now listen to the filter cutoff without it. Now as I increase this, you're going to hear, sometimes it has a wide depth, sometimes it has a narrow depth. And the complex rhythm you're hearing is basically LFO's 3, 1 hertz being modulated by LFO4's 0.67 hertz. And so you can make all kinds of polyrhythms. And now I want to also use LFO5 to change the rate of LFO3. So we got three different levels of complexity going on here. So what I did was assign LFO5 to LFO3's rate. It's currently at zero. Now as I turn that up, this LFO, which is going at 0.22 hertz, um, it is going to slowly speed up and slow down the rate of the LFO whose depth is also going up and down based on LFO4. Again, this is why they call it complex modulation. And like I said, there's 32 of these modulation matrix slots. So you could do some very, very complex modulation simply by using each one to modify the previous one and chain them up and it can get pretty crazy. Okay, so for my next example of complex modulation, I'm gonna take an envelope that's doing this and I'm gonna modulate the rate of an LFO that's modulating the volume. And the shape of that LFO is a sawtooth wave. So basically the volumes are gonna go ding, okay, like this. And it's important to understand, it's doing this not because of an arpeggiator or anything else, it's just that an LFO going to amplifier with this shape is repeating over and over. But now if I wanna do that bouncing ball on a floor where it keeps getting faster and faster and faster, I'm gonna take this envelope and modulate the rate of LFO3, like this. At that speed, it's more of a roulette wheel uh, than it is a bouncing ball, but we'll speed it up a little bit. So what I'm changing is the decay time. So now it gets slower, faster. <laughs> and I'm gonna change the curve of it a little bit just because I can. So LFOs on some sense can be set to either be always going and they just start wherever you happen to start, or you can set them so that every time you press a key that LFO starts in the same exact spot. In this case, I have it starting right at the beginning of the ramp so that each key has its own individual ball drop, for example. And just to pre it up a little bit, I'm gonna throw a mutant on with some wave stacking here. So there's yet another example and um, the only way to really get this is to just keep doing it yourself. So just take something that you typically use as a modulator, either an envelope or an LFO, and then take something else, whether it's a mod wheel or aftertouch or a ribbon or a pedal, and assign it to change something about the thing that's wiggling the first thing. And then if you wanna get really crazy, do the same thing again. Uh, one example, uh, 
it won't do it on this keyboard, but I needed to do the wah-wah in Pink Floyd's Money on the electric piano, and I was standing, so I didn't want to have to use a foot pedal, but I didn't want something boring going wow, 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 I wanted it different. So simply by taking one LFO and modulating another LFO that was then modulating the filter, it just sounded like I was randomly doing the pedal, and it sounded very convincing as if I was actually moving the pedal. So just lots and lots of different ideas, but really the only way you're gonna get this is to try it at home. If you have any further questions about the ASM Hydra synth, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. If you have any ideas for future synth clips, just write them down in the YouTube comments and we'll throw it on the list. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.